All right. Let's see what happens. <laughs> It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. I'm gonna give you 15 more seconds. You just follow me. Storytelling Cafe, Conscious Conversation and Filming. I'm co-host Scott Burton and uh, Ishmael Angalu Cope. Good to see you. Kriana, good to see you. Yeah. And good to see you. Look at you, Juan. Kriana, thank you all for joining with us. And you may notice that uh, Ishmael and I both have a cup of tea here. It's a tradition we're starting here on uh, Storytelling Cafe that we've borrowed from many great traditions of tea drinking and ceremony. Just want to offer you a cup of tea or the beverage of your choice, wherever you are, please, please grab one and join us for some storytelling. It's beautiful, Scott. Um, and just as Scott is saying that I'm thinking about how I was instructed in the storytelling art. In a real, in a genuine way, I, you know, when I was about 18, 19 years old, Brett Dillingham suggested to me that I join a play that would be storytelling um, and we would all perform theatricalized our, our storytelling <coughs> at uh, JDHS. And that was with Bethany Behrman and in 1999. And, you know, that was that was a lot of fun. So I, I learned storytelling, how to perform storytelling. And I, I took it on. But then, obviously, when you're that young, you still have a lot to learn. And one of the most important things in my life and beautiful experiences I had in my life was going to George Davis's house, Kahwan Ish, and he lived in Lemon Creek and with his wife, Agnes. And he was a master storyteller. Just a, he knew the old, old talk away. Yeah, Adeshka do sneaky, yes, and get it show Get in now, she gook. Yeah, Kahan ish. Just thinking about that here, so it helps me remember the the really nice, beautiful Klingit language. That was a real thing with someone who who really grew up with it and spoke it. And so what I was just saying there came from some of that joy of being around him. That I was saying in Klingit that he would tell the old style of Klingit. <laughs> And I go to his house and tell me the, this this amazing, beautiful Klinkit language. And it's just here is someone who is a human being, and I recognize their humanity, you know. And he values mine. And he called me Cha, Cha, Cha. Just thinking about the, the how it feels, Cha. Wasa wasa do a sock thing or take out a nach. Yeah, away, yeah, away, yeah, away. Ye eat a conach duck, cook quasanik. 
Um, I will. Iin kunach da kwatlanik. I will explain it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so cha, and that something that, that was what Walter Sobolov kajak uh, uh, described. He would say you would call someone of your own moiety, who is your close friend. Cha. It's like saying buddy, you know. And if it's someone of your opposite, opposite clan, in my case, that would be the eagle or the wolf, you know, I'd call, probably call them Achsani, Achat, you know, and that would be my, my paternal uncle or my paternal auntie. But in his case, he called me Cha, you know, and so when I'd go to his house at Lemon Creek, you know, again, real actual people and they live this they grew up with this you know he'd open the door and say to me and that was come in come into the house and I'm just That really was one of the best experiences in my life. Wow. That um, an older man can say in my ancestral language, come into the house. You know, and sometimes they would say, I'm going to tell stories to you. And just that, that, that right there, and I'm not trying to um, perform anything or uh, depict myself as anything uh, special. But that is what guides the work that I do. Being around people like that. And um, that we had elders like that that could make us feel that way. You know? Yeah. Human beings. And they weren't just trying to um, keep a culture alive or something. He just loved that a young man who was coming to his house wanting to learn from him um so i I didn't plan <laughs> this kind of um, uh, emotional thing, and so I don't. I I also get. I I think I get. Uh, uh, when so, I, I feel like sometimes people try to belabor the, the intense emotional quality, and I'm not. I don't want to do that. Um, but that is where I think this is kind of thing is coming from and why for me the sense of emo that in that emotional quality is is being honest I think about the how good that felt and also the sense that 
hey, can we do more of this? Yeah. During a time like now, you know, um, where people want to hear sincere, cool things, you know, not just, you know, people who are going to like uh, want to position themselves to as a, a saving kind of thing, you know, not that kind of thing. But yeah, you just th- there's a f- one of the other phrases that they would use is um Tlahua sa atawa us du kani yan hu te du ish has hu te. How very much that he longed or they longed to be among their in-laws and their father's people you know yeah that that sense of and and another thing that Clarence Jackson had said you know jayi tau yi yao tu sati ni aya at sati just seeing your faces there's nothing more important than that it is the thing that's the the clinker for that this which means nothing is greater seeing people's faces and how much that we have had to everyone personally deal with that has been i think that's on so many people's minds and so it's it's not to say you and I are are positioning ourselves in a certain way to to in in, in society to to do something right. to be something about that, but we are being being sincerely responsive to it, and that's a cool thing. I admire you, uh, Scott, for taking this on. And and choosing to want to talk to people about some cool stuff. Gonna cheese. Yeah, away. So yeah, that's that's the kind of thing. So again, I, you know, I I do get a little. I mean, the, what is the balance between how much we sh- we share our, who we are, and and then you know, how, uh, yeah, I I promised myself I wouldn't cry. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? Like yeah. That's so. I'll just say that. Without, it's not trying to save face. It's just I'll say that because that's we're talking through structure and, and craft as we go through this, and that is what one of the main concepts of what we had uh, planned for this episode. Kind of under the hood right now. What are some of the things that we are intending to share with our community? And not as a, that grand sense that I'm trying to avoid, but w- what are we here for? What are, we, what, what, what are we going for? I mean, that, maybe that's a good opportunity for you. It's a good chance for you to yeah. talk about where you, where, where you want to come from, Scott. I just want to say that image of you, Kakwan Ish, yeah. uh, going into his house and him saying, Neshku, come in and just the vision of that or the image of that that you just painted in my head is beautiful is going to hang out with an elder to to hear stories yeah. and i i think about you know in my life how much i've learned from stories mm-hmm. and they're fun and dynamic and and you know as i shared on the episode the other days i told the story of spending time with my grandfather um around this little Datsun car and that's where we would spend time together and he would tell me stories. I learned so much and it was fun. And the power of storytelling is is bigger than I know, but I know I like it and I know that I learned from it. And if we can create a storytelling cafe, a place where we tell stories, we invite others to tell stories, we look at stories, um, I feel honored and thankful that we can do that. Right on. Um, 
So yeah, I think, and and I think just as we go through this in terms of structure, there are probably two major thematic, Richard Down, however to call them, motifs. I think in stories that we can examine. And I think one of them is clear that we're following right here is the hero's journey, you know, which yeah. Joseph Campbell goes through. And we're on that. I mean, everyone's on that. Everyone's on their hero's journey. We're going through some, we're going through some things, you know, we want to see what we could do. And, and that's fun. I mean, and I want to, I want to go through strategies, you know, as, as we talked about in the first episode, like how do we use an illustration of a story to examine life stuff, things in our mind, things that we're going for, things that we, we hope to achieve. How do, how do we foster something? How do we, how do we create some prosperity for our family? That's, that's a concern of mine for okay. sure. You know, um, and, and, and like in a sincere way, genuine way, you know, so that's the hero's journey. And, but I also want to be good with, you know, which I, w one thing I, I appreciate us talking through the structure is the other part of that. There's a hero's journey of you going out and making something happen. But then there is also the, um, the son's myth, which is the warning story. So what is that energy that, that, that thrusts a person forward to um, achieve a vision, have the strategy for doing something really wonderful, you know, which is like Homer, the epitome of Homer and, you know, going for that. But then it also has its shadow, which I would suggest in which many anthropologists also to suggest. So it's, it doesn't, it's not, it hasn't originated from me. Its shadow is the sun's myth. Having so much ambition that you get too close to the fire, you get burned, you get too close to the sun. Is that like Icarus? Exactly, yeah. And the one that I adore on um, this continent would be from uh, and that, that's from uh, John Colty. And, but I'm not, I'm not, as I, I'm saying this is not trying to dismiss, you know, the Greek myth. That, that's, that's awesome because I'm, I'm studying a lot of Greek stuff and I'm obviously talking about Homer and everything like that. So like, let's, let's do a, a ton of Greek, a ton of it, please. <laughs> um, but. Uh, John Colty. Yeah, it, yeah. That's the, but all all I'm also trying to say is that the equal and the power and the greatness is also in uh, Turtle Island, or we would call Thlinget Ane or Thlinget Ane, either one. Thlinget Country for this particular region. Thlinget Ane is uh, the world, the land, you know. And so John Colty was a speaker of uh, Kathlamet and uh, Showalter K Chinook, I think, one of the Chinook languages, Chinook and languages. And he told the story of the son's myth where there was a young man who just wanted too much, you know, and got too close to the sun but was warned by the elder woman who said, who, who just told him, this is what you got to do. You can't go over this. Don't try to take more than you need. Nope. This is, this is where you got to be, <laughs> you know, and I'm, I, I'm not going to tell the whole thing, but that's, that is the concept behind it. And someone who wanted more because he saw the power of the sun. And of course, on planet earth, the main power is the sun of course you know powers everything creates life helps is the main main thing behind life you know and and someone who wants that a little too much without consideration for the the concerns and the well-being of the community around him or them 
yeah, and goes too far yeah. goes too far so that so that that to me is a wonderful balance in terms of the things and the concerns that we want to talk about you know um and it's not to go too far though into everything is conceptualized in terms of psychology you know because these stories are go further than psychology they i mean they're they go into places we don't even we don't understand you know um beyond but within our own uh traditions is the sense that we can uh use these stories as illustrations to teach us something so it's to acknowledge the vastness of those stories and its connection to nurture to nature and the rest of the world the rest of the universe um which we can never fully grasp but as human beings intelligent human beings coming from intellectual traditions and histories our own histories we we can work with those and 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 see what they teach us so i think that really is yeah that's a, that's a right there yeah so let me see if i got this right balancing the hero's journey with the sun's myth yeah. the the thrusting forward in terms of achieving a vision with the warnings the the, the genuine warnings about about um keeping your consciousness attuned to the concerns of the well-being of the community and of the world. Mm. You know, what is that balance? That's that's a good uh question for a podcast such as this. Um where we can have some fun, enjoy ourselves. But that is one of the one that could be a, a wonderful concern of ours. And and quite prescient, <laughs> useful, interesting, you know, in in a time like this. So, and here, by the way, as we're showing under the hood, <clears throat> we had planned a certain thing to talk about, which we could talk about at another time. One of the models is is Dick Cavett. Mm -hmm. That we are hoping to explore because of the 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 level of conversational acuity, lucidity that he would have with his guests because of just being such a terrific listener and conversationalist. Right. And that's a model for us. But even if we didn't talk about this for this episode, because we we want that conscious uh, structuring. And planning and preparation, but if something comes to the moment, that's what the moment is. And but the thing is, in the case of our production, showing under the hood, is when we get to the point where mainly you with me helping, supporting, we could show those stories, Joseph Campbell, and you know the hero's journey. And the sun's myth, and if, if there's a picture of John Colty, Colty, that would be amazing. Yeah, Del Himes is one of the great uh, oral literary scholars, who to me is is like Copernicus. I mean, seriously, that kind of uh, scholar. He was someone who explored, who who had learned all of those uh, languages from that area and who had translated a, a good body of uh, Elte's stories and had um, been a huge advocate of his, of his greatness. And he was initially transcribed, his stories were initially transcribed and translated by the father of American anthropology, uh, Franz Boas. So, but when we get to the production, you know, uh, we can show some of these people that, yeah. that we're talking about. Show little clips and snippets of it that we won't. We don't want to. We we don't want to cut out necessarily the things we're talking about unless it is. We don't want to say anything negative about someone or any. I mean anything like that, which can happen in conversations. 
you know, anything out of school, we don't we don't want to put out in the world, right? Like, we'll edit that out, but most of, but we're not going to edit ourselves, you know. But one thing we're going to do in terms of this podcast, our commitment, and Scott, your expertise and abilities is to add some of those flavorings of of here is the person that we talk about here's the thing that we had mentioned maybe we didn't get it to it while we're having the podcast but we can show a little bit of something while we're going through these conversations yeah so among the things you said that resonate with me thinking about dick cavett um as you know i worked as a uh, talk show host for an NPR affiliate here in Juneau for uh, several years. I worked in public media in the state for maybe 10. Um, and I always aspired to be a better interviewer, a better conversationalist. Uh, when I met you, you I had known about Dick Cavett. You told me, hey, check out these YouTube videos of Dick Cavett. He, you know, yeah. this guy's rad. Uh, so I started doing that and I, I really started trying to dive in to what makes a person a good conversationalist. What makes a person a good question asker? How do you, how do you bring up the person you're speaking with and, and exchange information? And, you know, I, I would listen to Terry Gross and NPR, um, Oprah Winfrey, um, uh, Trevor Noah in the daily show, John Stewart. I listened to these different interviewers went back and watched footage of Charlie Rose, these different interviewers and realize that it, um, there's a lot to it. And I have a lot to learn about right. the art of conversation. <clears throat> and I love that I have this opportunity with you to explore that as we tell stories uh, to to look at that sometimes maybe. You know, what a, what a neat thing to look at, the art of conversation. Yeah. Human beings communicating with each other, Yeah. right? And looking at these uh, people who are really good at communicating and taking some of their cues. What, you know, what are some things that Dick Cavett does that are, that are great in conversation, right? What did Oprah do right there that opened that person up or, or whatever? You know, it's like taking the learning from excellence, I think, <laughs> kind of a thing. Heck yeah. So that really touches on it. What, what, what was the thing that you just said? Taking the cues. Taking the cues. Yeah. Taking the cues, taking the, the excellent parts of what they do, you know, when, when, Dick Cavett does something that really keeps that conversation resonant. What was yeah. it? What did he do right there? Let's, let's, like a playbook. I almost want to get out, like a put him on the screen and like we're doing a football play. Like what analysis. just happened? Yeah, an analysis. What just happened? What, what is it about that strategy that I can emulate in my life or we can emulate, right? Um, to be better conversationalists or better listeners. There we go. And I think that's part of the thing, the, like the, the effort that we're, we're putting forward of showing who we are, that we're not saying we are this person, but the inspiration behind it, who are models and how can we talk about these really cool models out there and the things that they've done and how they did it and analyze it and I wouldn't say pick it apart, but but study their strategies. What kind of mode do they, they get in to, to do that? And I love Dick Cavett as an example, because that's like that's a classic model that probably was never quite duplicated to that depth. There was a way that he talked with people that reached a level of lucidity just in terms of his presence and his genuine interest in the things that they had to say and the way that he asked and, and when he when he asked it when he was on i mean there were times he was maybe not quite on and unfortunately he really he really horribly flubbed uh, salvador dali 
interview. And here's unfortunate. I mean, here's this guy's God. He at that time you can get the world's great great intellectuals, and he did. He sought them out, and he was just being a little too cute with 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 uh, Salvador Dali. Anyway, but like with Jean Luc Godard and with James Baldwin, as we had talked about um, personally, which I'd love to vi- you know visit in the podcast, but that mo- there, there's there's moments in conversation that he would get to that feels like uh you're in a lucid dream watching him i mean what there's something there's a skill there and it took a care to it and i think it was it was him it was partly that the times you know there there's the 60s and consciousness raising and that kind of thing but also something about that guy and that's why i like having those those inspirational models because that that didn't happen too much in tv and now in the historical time that we're at you know i i'd suggest that's happening more in podcasts and that's also partly why my own personal interest behind this our our own skill set our own our own backgrounds yeah and 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 what we can bring to the table not to suggest i'm dick cavett i'm james baldwin i'm that guy you know but as just as as you would say take cues from learn from study the strategies storytelling and and there is a great argument for stories just as they're beautiful stories you should just listen to them that's one of them which is is the main one and very important for me as a storyteller and as a literary scholar but there's also the tradition of utku kd in Clinket and also in many different my my new back side and other 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 sides uh, uh, other uh native american tribes i would say where they are they're doing exactly precisely what we for this form are choosing so we're not saying we represent all of storytelling here is our structure here is our hope here's here's what we're bringing to the table an analysis an illustration we're going to bring illustrations to the table and and how does that help hopefully more than just our own personal psychology and and in and, and interest in success which everyone's got this is great but but how can we use these things as if they're they're teaching tools and and fun things to talk about and explore and and that's conversation to me there's the story uh genre and there's the lived life genre and then you tell a story about your lived life but then the conversation is analyzing it and and expounding on it learning from it uh using that as a tool uh, appropriately you know what i'm trying to 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 make clear is stories should be okay just in themselves as literature as beautiful things as as poetry is as something that just makes your soul feel great you know and then there is the aspect of utku kd the parable that we draw from uh, a lesson earlier today you mentioned something about a story being like a portrait in time did i hear that correctly uh, do you remember that uh a story being a portrait of something at a certain time. I, I don't know. We don't have to go there if you don't want. I just thought I heard that earlier today when we were talking <laughs> yeah, on the phone or something. <laughs> no, 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 I'm sorry. Just, I'm just, I, it's nothing's coming to me. <laughs> okay. We'll get that one no, later. No, no, that's okay. And let's keep this. Buddy. <laughs> um, that's okay. That's yeah. okay. That's okay. <sighs> That's that's partly what 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 we're gonna experience is like, you know, um, 
we're having a conversation and, and sometimes I'm going to forget something that, you know, that, that was one of the things I was just saying, like moment we're, we're just having right here. There are times where I am on a track of something I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. And then I think about, I go on a tangent and then I try to explain that tangent. And then I'm like, what was I trying to first say? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And what I'm asking you as my co-host uh, that we've been talking about is like, can you help me when I, if I go there? And thankfully I haven't gone there that so yet, but I do like all the time. So, but I just don't remember, <laughs> the thing. but um, anyway, uh, oh, I, th I, I do need to get going. All right. Uh, but I think it would be great to do the uh, short stories segment, which we will put in uh, later because we don't have the slide right now. <laughs> but we'll put in short stories and short stories and strategies. All right. Short stories and strategies. Um, did you have, you, remember you had a short story? Sure. Okay. Short story. Here's something I'm thinking about a lot right now is this idea of improvisation. And maybe it relates to conversation as being able to be in a conversation and improvise, being able to have a good conversation. Um, you know, and I think of master guitar player, Django Reinhardt, or master tennis player, Serena Williams, it's like they're improvising when they're they're doing their art. They're not thinking. They are just there. They have the toolbox. They have the skills. They have everything they need to do that. Um, I had all the skills I needed to do that once in my life when I was snowboarding. I was a good snowboarder. I, I might still be able to do it. Um, and I could go down a big mountain slope, and I had the athleticism, I had uh, the awareness, I had whatever, um, lots of practice. I'd been snowboarding for a long time to where I, I could just do it. I could just improvise without <sighs> time stopped, right? It just, or it went fast. I don't know. It, you know, I, I think I've heard of people talking about these moments where you're just weightless and, and, and you're doing this thing. Um, so that's my short story for today. And, uh, and just this thought, which I might try and pursue more with this show is this thought of improvisation, you know, Wynton Marsalis playing the horn and the magic that happens when, when that, when that happens, him improvising, um, maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe it's a metaphor for life trying to to improvise in life. How can I, I go through life like that? And I, I don't know if that's possible, uh, but I'd like to explore it. That's great. Yeah. What comes to my mind when you talk about that is because I'm, I'm listening a lot to Teddy Atlas's podcasts and I'm, all, all, I'm also personally attuned to concepts of training and I'm, I'm, I'm physically and mentally training myself. And what comes to my mind is a sense of orientation, you know, I think that comes with, with the kind of things that you're talking about. That, uh, in, in a sense, improvisation may, may also just mean more that there's an orient, I'm not trying to recharacterize your words, but that it could mean that there's an, there's an orientation in, in a very realized structure, but that is totally attuned uh, to the moment and ready to respond to it with whatever the moment needs. You know, and, and, and I appreciate your, your discussion on, on Art of War, Sun Tzu, strategy, you know, the, the, uh, like a concept of, of art of war is not necessarily that someone who embraces violence, but, but just someone who can um, care for the homeland, care for people, be responsive to a situation. And one of some of the, those main ancient teachings are like someone who is just really good at every single thing, 
You know, not uh, 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 jack of all trades, master of none, but master of all, <laughs> you know, like, which no one could necessarily get. I mean, maybe there is some people who got there, but who can meet you at each part of your game. And that is some of the hero's journey strategy, cool stuff that I want to talk about. That's the cool stuff. That's, that's like, what is this moment? Oh, I've trained for this, so I could do it. You know, yeah. Or like Teddy Atlas talks about with Michael Jordan, he trained for that moment. <laughs> you know, he begged for that moment. He wanted that moment. He trained. He believed. You know, like that's the cool stuff. I, I, I really, uh, what is all that? And I relate to it as an oral literary scholar. I can see the ancient connections of storytelling that someone who, like Teddy Atlas, brilliantly uh, elicits in his teaching. And his podcast, The Fight, is so lovely and a main inspiration. Since we also talked about Dick Cavett, The Fight with Teddy Atlas uh, is Stellar. I'm so glad you turned me on to Teddy Atlas. Yeah. I've only watched a few episodes so far, but I am his ability at conversation and yeah. his ability to be present. And he's worked in the field for so long. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I can't wait to uh, talk more about Teddy Atlas as well. I, I love his teachings and that podcast, his appreciation for that podcast, just to be a touchstone that, that we just share the love and joy and happiness over things we've learned and when there are great teachers like that who are freely sharing thankfully you know there are people like teddy, teddy atlas out there teach us how to win you know he says you could survive or you can learn how to win you know surviving is oh the moment oh no oh, yeah but he shows us winning You know? Yeah. Um, so that's, but yeah, that's, that's Teddy Ellis. And, um, but you, sorry, did you, did you have that? And then I, I also had the, the, the short story. Yeah, so. I'm excited to hear your short right. story. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's my short story. I was in Portland with, uh, my wife Lily and our daughter Elizabeth when she was very young I think it was that trip and I wanted to check out a jazz club because I've been getting into jazz you know and wanted to see what a jazz thing was and I was into like the little jazz club scene with Michael Mann's collateral with Tom Cruise and Jamie Foxx and they're just like in the jazz club and Tom Cruise, he was just talking about like the I Ching and just, he hangs behind the notes. It's off melody, behind the notes, not what's expected. Improvise like tonight. That's part of the keys. You know, he's talking about whatever, he's, 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 he's elucidating the jazz methodology and what the, the finer artists do. And so he is an aficionado. We can talk about the jazz, you know? So that was my, I, I, I like that cool club jazz thing, you know? Um, and so I, I wanted to check one out in Portland and I did, and that was fun. And it wasn't quite like the movie, The Collateral, <laughs> but it was decent. Decent uh, Frank Sinatra sw swinging type music. And I'm glad that I went. It was a nice s small club. Um, and mainly seniors were there. <laughs> and which is a great, yeah. You know, but I was, again, the the, uh, the cultural expectation of the jazz, jazz club. And then you go to one and you're like, okay, it's a little different. But I was there, and the person who was the the barkeep, I I saw, because I was ordering a drink, 
and I saw that she looked like uh, Nicole Kidman. <laughs> she looked like very, very much like Nicole Kidman, you know, and then she had like maybe a, uh, you know, a, ben a black bandana on and just a very simple black shirt on and, and that kind of thing. And, and just so much. Looked like exactly like Nicole, pretty much. And sorry to interrupt, but hadn't yeah. she been married to Tom Cruise at some point? Too? Oh, that's funny. We <laughs> got to, the Tom Cruise and Nicole. Right? <laughs> anyway, so I just okay. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's good. Um, but I just so here's a person who looks like Nicole Kidman at this jazz club, which is not what I expected, but still I enjoyed. And I, I just for conversation, she's getting my drink and. I said to her, you know, I bet you look like someone that like people just say to you that you look like someone. <laughs> and she and she, she looked back at me and she said, uh, who do I look like? And I just said, just look like someone. <laughs> you just like look like someone. And I just took a drink. <laughs> and I don't I don't know what it is about that story that is a takeaway or interesting, but I didn't want to tell her. Yeah, you look like Nicole Kidman because I'm sure she got that all the time. I'm sure every day someone's like, "Do you look like you you kind of look like Nicole Kidman?" All right, you know, that kind of, I'm sure all the time. And I didn't want to be one of those guys who did that. I started that, but once I knew looking at her face, like she was like, yeah, I get this. And you're going to tell me it's Nicole Kim. <laughs> you know, like she was like, she knew it. And I didn't want that. I, I put, I, I got myself so close to that situation of, um, I don't know why, it, it, like I, it's a personal sense of honor for me that I, I didn't say that or why I would get so close to the situation. But that's, that's my, uh, my Nicole Kidman look like story at a jazz club. <laughs> Got to roll with it. Adapt. Darwin. E. Ching. <sighs> so, Thank you for sharing that right story. On. I think that's a great yeah. note to end on today. Thinking Beautiful. about that. Beautiful. Right on. Good stuff, man. Gunasjish Koyana. Thank you. Ah, Gunasjish Koyana. Thank you. Right on. Arigato gozaimashita. Okay. We'll see you uh, when we see you. All right.